Oh boy, I heard you. Don't, don't worry, I heard you. I recently uploaded a video on a foolproof method on how to get the blue rose in Animal Crossing New Horizons and a lot of people found success in it. However, a lot more thought the process was too complicated and took way too long. It took me 19 game days and about 11 hours. So today, I'm bringing you a much more simple four step method which relies more on the bulk breeding at the end from a low probability flower rather than taking eight steps to get the super reds that produce blues 25% of the time. And this also contains no test breeding. So to get started here, I have a 12 by 24 plot of land dedicated to the four step process. And I've separated it into four sections of various sizes because each step has a, a different chance to produce the next offspring that we want. I'm going to be using 20 white seed bags, 6 red seed bags, and 9 yellow seed bags. Remember, you want to use roses from seeds because their genetics are set, and we want to make sure that we're getting the correct offspring. Now I've kind of guesstimated the amount of each seed that I'll need for this method, so we'll see how it goes and if we get a bottleneck at any given point. Finally for the setup, I want to mention that I will be watering the plants by myself because I don't have any friends. Uh, no, it's because I wanted to test this in the worst case scenario for you guys, but of course if you have up to five friends water your flowers from different islands then you can drastically increase the speed of breeding and probably cut the time taken to do this down by about a third. Now I'm not usually one to ask for a like on a video, but if you wouldn't mind hitting it then that would be awesome. I actually go through the entire process of all of my guides myself to gather the footage and check that they're legit, so it's a fair amount of work and if you appreciate it then dropping a comment and leaving a like is a good way to show that. So while I get these seeds planted, I want to go over a few comments I frequently got on the foolproof method, but before I do I want to explain our goal here. In the previous video, I mentioned that the old method of crossbreeding an orange and purple to get hybrids red was inefficient because you could get two different reds. 50% of the time you'd get a good hybrid red that had a 1 in 64 chance of producing a blue rose, but 50% of the time the hybrid red would be a bad hybrid red, never producing a blue. And it was not very convenient to test if you got a correct one. Well step 3 in this method that I'm showing today will always give you the good hybrid red. So now to answer a few questions from the last video and to preemptively answer them again in this one, can I get more blue roses if I put two blue roses together and crossbreed them? Yes you can. Two blues that cross together will only ever make another blue. But it's actually more efficient to separate them and water them individually since in New Horizons a parent can duplicate if there's not another rose touching it. Which answers my second question. If I have one blue rose how can I get more? Water it all on its own. Next, I want to mention that if you go on a mystery tour and you can find roses there, then you have the ability to find hybrid island with roses on it too. Take all of the orange roses you can get from those because if you breed them together, there's a 1 in 16 chance to get a blue rose. A huge shortcut for those who have roses as either their native or sister flower. Finally, you'll notice that I'm planting these seeds in a different layout for each step. And that's because there are a number of layouts that you can use and throughout this process I want to explain the pros and cons of each. So to begin with I've planted all of the white roses in a too wide dense block. This works well in a small space and all of the parent flowers have identical genetics since they're growing from seeds. A dense block like this is beneficial in a small space since if a flower decides it will produce an offspring, there are several different partner roses touching it that it can choose to cross with, as opposed to if you plant them across grid pattern which takes up more space and runs the risk of separating breeding pairs. You'll want to plant all of your seed flowers on day one so that you'll have your red and yellow roses already grown by the time you need them. On day three your flowers will have almost bloomed and a tip for you guys if you didn't know was that the flowers can actually breed and duplicate at this stage. The flowers don't have to be fully bloomed like the cosmos up there. If you can see the color of the flower bud then they can breed. This is helpful as well because this is also the stage a new flower spawns at when a parent duplicates or crossbreeds. So if you haven't already guessed it, step one of the four step method is to water these whites and cross them together from seed bags to produce purples. An offspring flower has a 25% chance to be purple from these, so it shouldn't take too long, especially if you have 20 whites like I do. On day 6 I found my first purples, in fact I got two of those and we can happily move them onto step 2 of the 4 step method. This is to breed purples from step 1 with reds from seeds. For step 2 I chose to keep my flowers in breeding pairs. This is where you keep the two flowers that you want to crossbreed separate from other pairs to avoid potential contamination. 
there's a lower chance that the flowers will choose to produce an offspring and it's not as space efficient as other layouts, but it helps to identify correct flowers and keeps the parents safe from accidentally breeding with the wrong colors. Keep watering your whites to get more purples to move over to step two, and what we're looking for from step two is a pink rose which has a 50% chance to appear, so it's super easy to get, hence the smaller plot size for this step. It doesn't take very long to get the pinks that we're looking for here, in fact I got two pinks on day eight, which was fantastic. So step three of the four step process is what could take a while, especially if you're doing this solo and not relying on visitor watering bonuses. Step three is to take the pinks from step two and cross those with the yellows from seeds. This has a 12.5% chance, so one in eight, to produce a red rose. Now these reds will always be the good hybrid reds that have a chance to produce a blue rose. So keep trying to get more pinks from step two to get more pink and yellow breeding pairs. I'm using the individual pair layout again for this step, but a bonus tip for you since I received a lot of comments about this last time is to keep a trash can nearby. Every time a new flower spawns, you either want to throw it away or use it elsewhere in your town, I guess, or move it onto the next step if it's the correct offspring. For example, in step two, half of the flowers produced will be pink, which you want to move on to step three, but the other half of the flowers produced will be red, and these will have different genetics to the seed reds that you do not want to put back into your flower plots in step two. Throw the reds away instead, and I recommend you do this for every step of the four step method, just to guarantee more chance of success. Day 30 was when I finally got a hybrid red from step three. If I were to do this method again, I would definitely scale up the size of my step three plot as to increase the chance of getting a red because 12.5% is pretty low. What you wanna do now is gather as many of these reds as you can. So separate the reds and plant them on their own. Water them so that if it decides to produce an offspring, there's no other parent touching it immediately so that it will duplicate instead and also continue watering your pink yellow pairs from step three to get more hybrid reds. Remember the reds from this stage will always have the same genetics. By day 50, I had a total of 11 hybrid reds and now you can see my layout for duplicating a bit more clearly, leaving a space in between each flower. The more these hybrid reds you get, the better, because like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, the probability of getting a blue from these is very low. So we make up for that by having quantity instead. Keep duplicating these reds, keep watering your pink and yellow pairs to get more reds as well. On day 55, I had about 16 hybrid reds and that's when I decided it was time to crossbreed them. So step four of the four step method is to cross hybrid reds with hybrid reds for a 1.56 chance to get a blue. That's one in 64. This is why I said quantity would be your friend here. More crossbreeds equals more chance to find success. It could take you one day, it might take you 100, but the important thing is to keep watering them and keep adding more hybrid reds to this area. This time I chose to do a cross grid layout just because it's what most people use. I don't think it's too efficient personally, but I wanted to show that it can work, especially since all of the parents in this plot have the same genetics. Keep watering your flowers from step three as well and move any hybrid reds from step three to this plot. But the big thing here is to make sure you remove any flower that spawns in your fourth plot, since there's a high chance new reds can spawn here with lots of different potential gene combinations. Now, some of these actually increase the chance of getting a blue, but some of them will never give you a blue. If you wanted to, you could keep adding the reds you get from step four back into your step four layouts, but in my opinion, it's better to be safe than sorry and just throw them away. Just put the reds in here that you get from your pink and yellow pairs. And it was on day 81 that I finally obtained a blue rose from these hybrid reds. So it was actually pretty similar in time to the nine step foolproof method that I showed a few weeks back. What I like about this four step method is how simple it is. Yeah, okay, so at the end you get a one in 64 chance of a blue rose without a surefire way of raising the odds to one in four, like in the foolproof one, but there's less keeping track of each step, and my favorite thing is that no color is ever used more than once, except for the red at the end. So white and white makes purple, purple and red makes pink, pink and yellow makes hybrid red, and then hybrid red and hybrid red eventually makes blue. It's really easy to move on the correct offspring to the next step. 
So I hope this video was helpful to you. I know a lot of people found the previous method that I showed very daunting and not worth the effort. Now you have two potential methods to get to the blue if you want to grow it yourself and not purchase it online or if you don't have access to the island orange roses. Don't forget that if you invite other people to your town and get them to water your flowers for you, you can drastically speed up this process and also because the final step is a 1 in 64 chance, your mileage may vary on how quickly you get it based on how many hybrid reds you have at the time. Thank you very much for watching. If you fancy checking out some more New Horizons videos, then I have a bunch of guides on my channel. I also have a diary style playthrough as well, so feel free to check out a video that the YouTube robots will suggest on your screen now, or drop a follow to my Twitch account, twitch.tv slash Dazaban, link in the description, where I stream the game every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday afternoon. And it's been really cool to meet a few of you guys from my last Blue Rose video over there. Thanks once again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.